Welcome to this video on redox titration calculations. We're zeroing in on this video on the concept of finding the mole ratio uh, and specifically we're thinking here about multi-step procedures where we've got uh, mole ratios that we want to find uh, when there are multiple reaction equations and when you have a situation where you're trying to find the ratio between two species that don't occur in the same equation. So here's a concrete example for you to have a look at. So we've got a two-step procedure here. First step, bromine reacts with iodide, uh, releasing iodine. That iodine reacts with thiosulfate uh, in this reaction here. So typical two-step redox titration. Um, and typically we have a standard solution of thiosulfate, and so we know the concentration of that. Uh, and we can therefore know from it the titer value, uh, we can work out the number of moles of it. And we're trying to link that to the number of moles of bromine. Uh, let's say we're trying to find the concentration of a solution of bromine, for example. Um, and, a, and a key step in that is to find the ratio of moles between thiosulfate and bromine, but they're not in the same equation. So how are we going to go about that? So the key is to find uh, some kind of linking reagent or a link species. And that's going to be something which uh, arises in the first equation uh, and then gets used up in the second equation. So in this case, we see that the quantity of bromine you have here is going to determine the number of moles of iodine uh, that you have here. And then the iodine gets used up in the second step. So iodine is our what we call our link species. And I'll just put it in a square uh, box here uh, just to show that. Okay, so then the next stage is we need to try and find the mole ratio between uh, the two species we're interested in. Let's say the bromine over here and the thiosulfate down here. Uh, these are the ones that we're interested in uh, and we want to try and link each of these to iodine with a ratio. So if we look in the first equation uh, we can see that one bromine in the equation, this balancing number would be one, so one mole of bromine uh, is going to react to form exactly one mole of iodine because again this balancing number is one that you can't see it. So uh, we can write that out in a little table uh, we can write out that the bromine to iodine ratio uh, is 1 to 1. Then we're going to do the same thing with thiosulfate. So in the second equation, uh, we can see that 2 moles this time, because there's a balancing number of 2 here, 2 moles of thiosulfate uh, are going to react, this then balance number would be 1, with 1 mole of iodine. And we can stick that into our little table here. So we're going to have a third section here, which is thiosulfate over here. And we'll do a second row. So we can imagine this is our first step, and this is our second step. Uh, in our second step, we found that 1 mole of iodine uh, reacts with 2 moles of thiosulfate. So if we talk this through, 2 moles of thiosulfate reacts with 1 mole of iodine, and that 1 mole of iodine from up here came from 1 mole of bromine. And so we can combine these ratios and see that actually 2 moles of thiosulfate came from 1 mole of bromine via this link species, which is the iodine, uh, which would have a, a ratio of 1 here. So we can write out this ratio relatively easily now. We can see 2 thio is going to eventually have a connection with 1 mole of bromine. So if we know the number of moles of thio, so let's say we've got 1 mole of thio, we know that we've got half as much bromine. So we could equivalently write the ratio like this. And that's a useful way of writing it because now if I know that I've got, say, five moles of thiosulfate, all I need to do is multiply that by a half. So this is my multiplier of that number of moles of iodine, and that gives me the number of moles of bromine. So here's another example for you to try. So pause the video and see if you can find the thiosulfate to barium ferrate ratio. Okay, here's how we go. So um, we need to find our link species here, so we're looking for something that's formed in the first one and used in the second, and again, it's iodine. Very common that it's iodine in these, um, because that's always what reacts with the thiosulfate 
in the second stage. So pretty much always iodine is our link species. So if we put uh, our iodine over here, um, so we find out in the first equation, if we're trying to link this with barium ferrate, which is over here, we want to find the ratio between barium ferrate and iodine. And we can see here that we've got a ratio of one mole to balancing number here is 1.5. So we can write that in a little table here. That's a 1 to 1.5 ratio. <clears throat> okay, so now we come to the second step. Uh, we want to try and link to thiosulfate, which is here. And we can see here that we've got a ratio of iodine to thiosulfate of 1 to 2. One mole to two mole. Now, the problem with that is that in this first step, I formed 1.5 moles of iodine. So I really want to know if I'm going to connect barium ferrate to thiosulfate, I need to know how much 1.5 moles of thiosulfate is going to react with. So this is where you have to, another, another complication where we've got unequal balancing numbers of the link species. We need to simplify this, we need to change this ratio, keeping things in proportion so that we've got the same number of moles of my link species. So we need 1.5 moles there instead. Now that's essentially multiplying by 1.5. Uh, and so if we multiply this number by 1.5, we're going to get 3 moles. So if we write things in here, then thiosulfate, that's going to turn out to be 3. And again, we keep our link species number the same so we're going to have 1.5 to 3 so if we then kind of combine these two ratios uh, we're going to see that we've got three moles of thio over here and one mole of barium ferrate over here with our link species iodine having 1.5 moles in the middle so if we're going to write this ratio we've got a ratio of 3 to 1 uh, or you could equivalently write this if you want to make life easy for the next stage of the calculation as a one to one third ratio and this would then be your multiplier of the number of moles of thiosulfate to get the moles of barium ferrate. Here's a third example for you to pause the video and try to do. This is now a three-step process. See how you get on. Right okay so we're trying to find the thiosulfate to oxygen uh, ratio here. So we're going to just box up the ones that we're trying to find. Oxygen occurs up here. So these are actually separated by a whole other equation. So we're going to need two link species. So if we look at the first one, we're looking for something made in the first one. Well, there really isn't another option apart from the manganese hydroxide. And that manganese hydroxide is found in the second step too. So we are going to see that's a link species there. Um, and then we're looking for a product of uh, this second reaction, which is used in the third. And again, it's our old friend iodine. Here we are. OK, so how are we going to link these all together? We're going to have iodine as one linking species. We're going to have to have some manganese hydroxide. And we're going to have to have oxygen at one end of things and at the far end, thiosulfate. So we need to connect these all together. We will need to get these individual ratios for the three steps. So from step one, uh, if we look at the balancing number of oxygen, it's a one to four ratio with the manganese hydroxide. So I'm going to have one to four from the first step. Second step, manganese hydroxide, there's actually two of them. There's two moles there. And uh, one mole of iodine. But remember, I need to make sure that if I made four moles of manganese hydroxides up here, I need to have four mole here. 
So that means I need to switch that to a 4, and iodine then becomes a 2. So if I write the ratio in here, in the second step, I've got 4 to 2. Okay, third step, I've got 2 moles of iodine in this one. The actual ratio from the equation will be 1 iodine to uh, 2 uh, thio. But because I had 2 moles of iodine from that step, I need to switch this to become 2. And so the thio becomes 4 moles there. So if I now write the ratios in, I've got 2 moles of iodine and I've got 4 moles of thiosulfate. So if I now combine the ratios, I am just going to leave off the middle ones because I know that they're equal. I've got one oxygen over here and uh, four thiosulfate. So my thiosulfate to oxygen ratio is four to one, or we could write that as one to a quarter where this would be your multiplier if you knew the moles of thio. So summarizing, to find the mole ratio between two species which are not in the same equation, we need to find link species or linking reagents, uh, which is the product of one reaction and a reactant in the next. And there might be several of these link species if you've got a three or four or five or n step process. Uh, then you're going to find mole ratios which connect each species you're interested in to the link species. So from this step we've got the iodine bromine ratio, this one we've got the thiosulfate iodine ratio. Then you're going to ensure that the iodine, uh, the ratios have the same number of moles of the link species. So same number of moles for the link species. In other words, both ratios have got to have an iodine of 1. And you may find that a table like this helps and this would be your final ratio. You're sort of blending the two, basically just writing the numbers from each column down at the bottom to get the overall ratio. And that works as long as you have the same number of moles for the link species.